I have an opportunity now, just simply, if you do have a copy of this, or if you don't have one, please don't fret, because it is online. You simply go to spaceflorida.gov, on the front page, lower right-hand side, I believe, Emma, you'll see International Space Station Research Competition, and all the information is there. Um, I don't want to spend, like, a lot of time just reading this to you, but I just want to mention that it is there, and um, also that uh, you can avail of it, go to it any time, and all the documents that you require about nanoracks on Space Florida, on the competition and the rules, and frequently asked questions, they're available for you to examine. Um, I'm going to take about 10 minutes just to run through this quickly. If there are some questions, what we'll do is, in order not to hold up to proceedings, because we have the technical information coming very shortly from NanoRacks, and I, want, I know you guys want to get into that pretty quickly. So um, I'll start off right away. Um, if you, again, if you have a copy of it, um, I'm simply reading, but um, we'll take questions later outside, as will all the other participants. So the objective of the competition um, is for Space Florida and Nanorax to partner and provide a competition in which up to eight winning individuals or organizations will be provided an opportunity to fly their scientific payloads to the International Space Station and have their research conducted on board the U.S. Uh, lab on the ISS. That's a heck of uh, an interesting proposition, and I'm sure you all want to consider and get your applications in by email by the 31st of October, 5 p.m., to the Space Forest site. So you will get those addresses again online. So continuing, the competition is designed to bring forward innovations, research opportunities, and access to the ISS. Space Florida and NanoRax share the view that breakthroughs in basic research on materials biological, environmental monitoring, as well as understanding complex drugs, drugs have viable and immediate application for human health benefits and commercial research. This research will be beneficial to broader applications in future launch systems, frequent access to Earth orbit, and help ignite commercial capabilities for dedicated launches and research opportunities. Space Florida and NanoRags view these areas as emerging markets for government for commercial and academic customers. Moving on, Space Florida and NanoRacks have designed Space Florida International Space Station Research Competition as an opportunity for dedicated scientists, engineers, and interested parties to fly and test their research on board the ISS. And given the present day limitation on resources and accessibility to the ISS, this competition should be viewed by all applicants as a fortuitous opportunity to undertake valid research at a minimum cost. The judges of the competition will therefore critique each proposal, seeking the very best of scientific research in numerous disciplines. The scope of scientific research that has been sought in this competition will be expected to conform to professional standards, have commercial viability, and be of benefit to mankind. So then we list the various formats, I won't go through those there, but skip down to competition summary at the bottom of page one. The workshop, of course, being held today, in which we hope to simply to give you information. Nanoracks are here, cases are here, and of course you have your tables outside and they can go and talk and answer those questions. And also remember, if you want some private time after lunch, you can actually write it in there and reserve that private time if you have some particular areas you want to inquire about. Now the competition is open to all individuals and organizations, both US and international. So it may include educational institutions, industry, nonprofit organizations, federally funded research and development centers, NASA centers, and partnerships between such entities. The deadline for all proposals must, must be emailed. We don't need hard copies. Send to info at spaceflorida.gov. Put proposal in the subject line on or before 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, October the 31st, the end of this month, 2012. Technical support, okay, we have the address there for technical support, which I won't read to you. There is an interface control document supplied by NanoLabs and how to build a NanoRax payload. Those documents, we have some hard copies here at reception when you checked in. If you wish to take those hard copies, please do. Again, it's also on the website. <clears throat> Final authority. The final inter interpretation of all rules and regulations will be at the sole discretion of the competition judges and Space Florida. All decisions regarding dis the disqualification of applicants, competition winners, and or proposals are at the sole discretion of the competition judges and Space Florida. 
a lot of people obviously gave us that line. <laughs> Moving on, the format of the competition. They, I mentioned the workshop here, so I'll skip that and move on to the second point. There are up to two, or uh, rather eight payload box units or nano labs available for use for this competition winners. Additional nano labs may be purchased directly by competition applicants. And for that, you need to go to talk to nano labs or nano racks. Space Florida has the right to determine the number of winning payloads that will be selected, but we're looking at up to eight. Uh, that is what their preference is for. Nanolabs will have a slot on the NanoRacks platform on the ISS for a period of up to 30 days. So you're looking at 30 days research with a downlink, which is very, very interesting and very should be very rewarding experience. Uh, up to eight competition winners will be provided space transportation to the ISS for their se selected research. And our preference, of course, is for a Falcon 9. What, why else would we go anywhere? Competition winners will pay for the development of the payloads. Space Florida pays the cost of transportation. So as Dr. J.D. was saying earlier on, if you think that maybe there's an opportunity to make a proposal to a grand consortia in your state, uh, be it Florida or elsewhere, please contact Dr. J.D. He'll, be, I'm sure, be happy to give you the name of the directors in the various states around the, the nation. So it's a great opportunity to get a little extra funding to build your payload, very critical. The nano labs are four by four by four. I'm told that's a cube. And there are, <laughs> there are some uh, cubes out there on the nanoracks table. So why not go over and touch it? And maybe your opportunity is inside a cube, such small dimensions, but powerful opportunity. Five hours of nanoracks co um, consultation on payload technical interface will be provided at no cost to competition winners. Upon selection of the winners, NanoRax will work with the winners and establish a payload development timetable. This is very critical that you have your payload ready for flight, that you're working closely with CASES and NASA to get yourself on board that flight, whatever one you're being selected for. Uh, we, NanoRax, of course, will work with NASA regarding safety reviews and required payloads uh, for the ISS. Competition winners will be, uh, will be provided with power, command, and down leak data for those 30 days as agreed to during the development of your payload. OK, competition rules. And we don't have too much more, but uh, I'll just move on. Uh, competition applicants must submit their competition proposals by email to the address that we've given you by close of business, 31st of October, 2012. Email only, no hard copies, please. Providing false or misleading information may result in an applicant being disqualified. Neither Space Florida nor NanoRacks are liable for any costs of preparing your proposals or construction and design of research payloads that may be presented for consideration in the competition. These costs are the sole responsibility of you, the applicants. Proposals should, at a minimum, address the criteria in Rules 4, and we'll get to that in a few moments. Moving the page through page three, we're getting through this nice and fast now. The proposal should be submitted electronically in PDF or Word format. Um, it's uh, eight, uh, one and a half inch by 11 inch side pages. You've got the font size there, 12, a maximum of 30 pages, please. We don't want to be too tough on our judges. <laughs> uh, hard copies of the proposals are not requested. Uh, the competition is open to both US and international applicants from professional, business, non-private, uh, and, and private entities, and from individual persons worldwide. And of course, for those folks who are um, watching us on our space, I want to say our commendation to Space Vidcast, who are transmitting this recording right now to many of the folks uh, internationally who are watching and probably very concerned with an opportunity that internationally they could submit a proposal to Space Florida, be judged to be as a winner, and then fly from, from uh, the Space Center. So it's a, it's a great opportunity internationally as well. So moving on, NASA is the final arbitrator on all issues related to the flight opportunity, including but not limited to flight manifest, safety review, technical review, access to astronauts' time, which is very expensive, and of course, if appropriate, return of your experiment. But that would have to be negotiated separately, I understand, with NanoRex getting a nod from the guys up front, thank you. Competition applicants may be asked to provide evidence of citizenship, this is just general rules, or personal details. Proposals will not be accepted from individuals less than 18 years of age. We simply wanted to cut down on a PI under 18 years of age. We felt perhaps uh, may not be qualified, 
and they would be best advised to work with somebody of a senior who has experience so that the proposal can be worthy of undertaking such a mission. Now, failure to provide or respond to any requested information from the judges may result in automatic disqualification, and that certainly won't happen to anybody in our audience here. Competition winners and judges. Space Florida will recruit and select a panel of judges with relevant scientific and uh, experience to support the competition. The decision of the judges, including issues uh, such as interpretation of rules, disqualification, and the selection of the winners is final. Competition winners agree to all the rules and regulations of the competition stipulated by Space Florida and Nanorax, the judges, and agree to enter into and be bound by all additional required agreements. The judges will operate under non-disclosure agreements to protect intellectual property of the applicants. And the judges will not provide technical assistance to any applicant. To date, we haven't announced any names of the judges, but we have some very eminent judges who have already agreed to participate, and those details will probably come out quite shortly. And I think we've got some very interesting judges. I think you'll find it of great interest to, to know who they are. Now, the criteria for the judges, and I'm going to read through these six or seven items. This is not, I'm not when I read the first one, does not mean it is the most important element. We simply have been placed in this format. So at a minimum, the judges will evaluate the proposals on the following criteria, and I'm not giving any preference to any element, as I say, just to repeat. That the proposal offers a reasonable return on investment and that it has clear visibility and application for commercial research. That the research detailed in the proposal proposes benefits to mankind if and when it, it is successfully developed and implemented. That the proposal is a viable and logistical approach of research that will neither impede nor endanger the mission to or on board the ISS. That the proposal may offer technical opportunities and benefits for future space travel, aerospace research, and the survival of astronauts traveling far from Earth. That the professional credentials and experience of the applicants will be considered. I think that would be a very important element. The proposed timeline for the development of the payloads and whether the timeline can be adhered to would be also a very, another important element of criteria. Proposals will be evaluated as to the amount of astronaut time that has been requested, and that makes sense, you can understand that. Certainly Sam would. <laughs> um, the judges and Space Florida may for any reason whatsoever disqualify a proposal or an application or a competition winner if something is found to be amiss. Moving on to media rights, very important, because if selected, I'm sure with your organization, with your entity or academic institution, there will be great prestige. I mean, one of perhaps eight uh, experiments selected to fly to the ISS, there will be a lot of publicity and media interest and attention in, in you and your experiment, what you have done, and you probably need to take advantage of that for future flight opportunities. So the name, trademark, or insignia of Space Florida, Nanoracks, or NASA may not be used unless applicants or competition winners request and receive prior written permission. That's very critical. Applicants and competition winners retain all media rights related to their participation in the competition. And moving on to our final page, Space Florida and Nanoracks retain all media rights related to the competition. Space Florida and Nanoracks may use any applicants' name, trademarks, and insignia, and the name and likeness of applicants without charge, as may be reasonably required in connection with the media, this is obviously an attorney's statement, in connection with the media material prepared and distributed by Space Florida and Nanorax relating in any way to the competition. Applicants and competition winners agree upon request to provide Space Florida and Nanorax with reasonable amounts of video or photographic images related to their participation in the competition and for the right of Space Florida and Nanorax to use such materials for public affairs or educational purposes. Obviously, it would be seen in a very positive light if um, the research being selected uh, can be used to promote further, um, further research. Then on miscellaneous, um, some items we just wanted to catch as well. Neither Space Florida, the judges, nor Nanorax claim intellectual property rights from any applicant or winner. Any trade secret, copyrights, patent rights, and software rights will remain their respective with the ownership of, uh, by the applicant or the winner. So you retain your IP. Space Florida and Nanorax cannot intrude upon that in any way whatsoever. Applicants and competition winners release and indemnify Space Florida, their, office, their officers, employees, and agents, Nanorax, 
and individuals and NASA officers, employees and agents from any liability damages of any kind arising out of a contraction or, a, or connected to their participation in the competition. Under no event whatsoever will Space Flutter uh, uh, officers, employees and agents, NANORAX or NASA uh, be liable to an applicant or a competition winner for acts or omissions arising out of a related to the competition or for the applicant or completion, the winner's participation in this competition. So a lot of legal jargon there, but es essentially everybody protecting themselves, which is the way it should be. And uh, we've used, uh, has got some good advice on that. Now our workshop, of course, just looking at our timeline, this is very critical for you. If you're considering, considering an application, proposal deadline, I've marked it there, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, October the 31st, 2012. Turns out to be a Wednesday. We would uh, hope to receive your applications by that time by email. You know the address, uh, it's on the website. The winners will be notified if you're one of the lucky winners, either listening here or in our very audience at the Solar Energy Center, uh, before 5 p.m. November 20th. That's a very quick turnaround and in fact, uh, is very exciting. And uh, uh, the team of us have been working on this, Alison, uh, Ryan and Emma, um, we think this is really going to make it a big push, so we've got about one month for those applications to come in. Uh, the winner's payload development period, uh, December 2012, this is moving on to NanoRax operations, they'll be going through this. The delivery of payloads, and then the most important thing, I suppose, for the researcher, the flight would be between October to December 2013. That's next year. That's really fast. So I think it's extremely exciting to kind of see that deadline and to know from this meeting here today if you submit a winning application you'll fly so soon with your research which is incredible so it's very exciting we're all pumped up about it both in NanoRax I know NASA and Cases and Duane they've been very supportive and you get to work with those folks very very closely preparing your payload for flight what an opportunity and uh, we wish you all every success nobody can not everyone can be a winner, but the winners, I hope, will inspire others to continue this kind of operation. And I'm hoping uh, down the line we might be able to do this again. That would be a wonderful opportunity.